I'm Eva and I'm a ceramist and um, this is my main product which is a flower pot and actually I could be making this over and over again. I think it's every year it's getting a little bit better <laughs> so just making this simple thing. But I, I, I studied five years material ceramics in a Kuopio School of Art and Design. They, we don't have that kind of education anymore in this country. But um, what I think, we what was important in that training that I learned about material and I, got, I knew where the materials came from and, and you got a little bit deeper touch in what you're doing. And uh, when I graduated back before you all were born, probably <laughs> 1990, uh, there wasn't actually any more work for ceramists because the global world, we got IKEAs and the global world became, everything turned cheap and they, everybody had too much stuff. So uh, I was actually quite <laughs> depressed <laughs> thinking that why did I choose a profession like this, that it's not needed, nobody needs more stuff and why, why would I do more ceramics into this world that's already suffocating in stuff and uh, uh, it took me a while and actually I wrote home Tarve, what do people need in the wall. I had a big sign because I felt like I have chosen this egological profession <laughs> and uh, then one day I was at the raw food place and I asked somebody that would you need any ceramics and they they said actually we would need a sauerkraut pot <laughs> to make sauerkraut and that became my first product but I didn't do it alone I used uh, uh, people who were oh my god <laughs> people who were uh, professional uh, raw food experts to to test my products and and the ones who criticized my products, I made them a new one. So I made uh, maybe five versions of the product before it was ready. And that's the product. And that was my main product for many years. And uh, I'm very proud of it, but the only reason it's good is because I took time to make the product. And I realized also that time I'm very much a functional wear maker. All my studying time I wanted to be an artist but, uh, but once I graduated then I realized there is not really a lot of... Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I left my telephone upstairs but I forgot to... Um, to I forgot to switch this off. Yeah, anyways, I want to talk about, because I think nowadays people are making things and they're just uh, making uh, all kind of uh, decorative things. But uh, I, I think it's important to go deep into the design. So take your time to do a product. So the first thing that comes up to your mind is not usually ready. I don't even show the picture of the first sauerkraut pots I did. <laughs> they were so terrible. But because of the, all these test users I had, I could make a good product. And it was because uh, at that time there were only these big German sauerkraut pots. But, uh, you know, a lot of people live in the cities and want to make uh, kimchi in or sauerkraut in their own kitchens. So this was a size you can put in the refrigerator put it in the closet, uh, put it in your oven to be sanitized. So I'm still very proud of this product. And I was making all different kind of kitchenware things. I really li love the gadgets, but I, uh, yeah, that was my start back 30 years ago. I can't believe it. And and then uh, in 1999, I was invited to Somero to an international ceramic symposium uh, organized by Arvo Kankare and Katarina Kayande. And 
for the first time in my life, I tried the thinnest clay, uh, thinnest white clay, which is this. That's my main material now. And uh, I just fell in love with it. It was it, uh, the touch was totally different than uh, the industrial clays that I was used. To. Actually, you can touch it because that's the most important thing about the material. And uh, and when I studied, this clay was considered kind of peasant, not really good because it's porous. And it was uh, we were all about stoneware, and and that time it wasn't internet, so we had these catalogs. I'm going to order black clay or this color clay, and all made in Germany or in Denmark, and and this was considered like uh, not proper artists were using this clay, and. Uh, and uh, because it was uh, porous, it was considered bad. But uh, I have a Buddhist background, so I, I, I always thought that in Buddhism, the, they said you can always turn poison to medicine. So I started thinking that in, in, what, in what products this material would be good. And, and at that time, I was making kitchenware products, so I, I started making all kind of uh, cheese coolers and butter coolers, and then end up doing this wine cooler, which was a hit at the, at the time. But doing it with the Finnish white clay, it takes several months because you have to, it's slow design. So I actually end up in the China making this industrially. <laughs> but that's a different story. I'm not getting into today. But anyways, I worked many years really hard and I was always having a lot of economical troubles because after studying, uh, well I studied first painting then ceramics and uh, I was always a poor student so I, <laughs> I, I from poor student to start a business it's not a good idea because you don't understand money and uh, so I was working like a I was working 60, 70 hours a week with no vacations and always paying rent too late and, uh, and ev really big financial problems that I know a lot of uh, designers and artists have. And uh, yeah, it was not fun. So after 15 years, I had enough. And I went to work at Helsinki Airport. I loved my job. And actually, my plan was to uh, leave the country, <laughs> 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 leave, leave pottery altogether. I, when somebody said that in Fiskars there's going to be this potter's meeting, I just ran to the opposite direction. <laughs> People keep talking to me about pottery. And I was like, please, don't talk me about pottery. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I was thinking that why did I, wa why was I so ecological that I wanted, to, I want to be an artist. I want to make art and, and I want to make pot. When the, I, I was just thinking the world is suffocating with all these things. Why would we do more things to this world? And uh, so I changed my name. I took my, f I was called with my second name. So I took my first name and my mother's family's last name because in Finland you can choose. Actually, I called uh, this officer and I said, I want to change my name. Uh, my mother has just passed and she said, in, in, fin in Finland you can just choose which parent's name you want to, well, which name you want to have. And so I took my mother's family name. I love my new name and my life has been so much better. It was like... <laughs> It was great. I was so tired of this Potter. I don't even want to say the name <laughs> I had before <laughs> because I was so tired of that person. And because I also realized that it was me who decided that I want to be a ceramic artist. So it was, I realized it was nobody else's fault. I could have gone to work at Helsinki Airport when I was 20. I loved my colleagues. I loved the atmosphere there. And and the paycheck, and the first time I went to the healthcare center there, the doctor said, now we're going to take care of you. <laughs> and I just <laughs> fell down and started crying. I was, because for f 15 years, I was, I, d I, d I felt like I didn't have any life. I w yeah. Anyways, 
It was so much fun. I, and that's what I said. Inari was one of my colleagues there who's working here now. There were so many people. There were dancers, uh, cellists, actors, all we working at Helsinki Airport. It was <laughs> I loved my work. But I, I was a part-time potter <laughs> on the side. It was so much fun to do pottery when I didn't have to think about the selling so much. And I, I started making flower pots and uh, decided that I'm not going to use any other clay than the one that I know where it comes from. And I, 2005, I stopped doing uh, kimchi jars and uh, any other stoneware. Are I had a lot of artistic project there too. And I, I stopped doing them and just started using this clay. And I have to say here that Nina, uh, I, I have a friend, Nina Skukster, who has been taking my pictures. So I'm a really lucky girl because she's incredible. Here, here's some of her pictures because she's a, a kind of a photograph who can get a feeling into the pictures. So I was making flower pots and teaware. And I, do, I didn't do tea wear because it's fashionable to do tea wear. It's because I do tea meditation. And I think uh, you do, now I think that the products need to have another meaning than just me making pottery. And I think meditation, when you have a tea bowl that's made from wild clay, it has such a different connection and feel that if you have an industrially made uh, tea, tea cup. And also, you know, the Japanese families who do teaware, they are six generations. So in one lifetime, I don't learn to do Chinese or Japanese teaware because you have to respect <laughs> their know-how. So I did this fusion. I did, because I've done tea art for 20 years, I, I just uh, respected the Asian traditions, but with the Finnish twist. Finnish clay, uh, and the touch is so fantastic in that clay. Uh, yeah, I was a happy part-time potter, and m my career at Helsinki Airboard was going up. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a responsible sales assistant for Max Mara. And to be honest, when I started there, I didn't know what Max Mara was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ever tell that to my employers. But uh, it's really funny. I studied five years design, and I didn't know anything about design brands. Because we were a bunch of hippies <laughs> doing pottery, you know. And, and to make your living, you have to know. No, it's very elitistic to do pottery. It's expensive, ecologically really expensive. So I was so happy at the airport. I learned so much about luxury retail and uh, handling money. First, first time somebody bought a coat, 2,000 euros, these Max Mara coats. When I packed it, I was shaking <laughs> because <laughs> I was so because I, I did, because that was my relationship with money. I was afraid of money, and and um, after two three years, I said, this coat looks fantastic on it on you. <laughs> If it looks, I always said what I thought. And then I said, this cashmere sh scarf would look even greater <laughs> with it. <laughs> and, and that was a really good learning. And I, now I have to say that my business is working. Now it's thank you for this experience. Because in my s uh, in when I studied, I don't think any of my uh, teachers had never worked in the profession. So we didn't have, and they didn't know how to count and what's the, the deal with the money. The money dealing with the money is the biggest problem in pottery. And in any <laughs> design. And then value in craftsmanship. I mean, I studied five years. I worked 30 years with the wheel. It's a professional does something what the hobby amateurs can't do. So if you do something that everybody can do, it's, it's not craftsmanship. And yeah, so I think it's really important to have the skill and give you, uh, I'm going to talk about this later too, but give yourself time to, uh, to uh, learn. And it was so much fun. I, people complain about their wages, but after being 15 years poor artist, 
that was enough money for me to do anything I wanted to. And uh, maybe I don't want to have big things, so. And, uh, and I think it's important to know that, that a lot of people think that they want to be artists, but they never find time to do it. So if, if it's the process is your passion, then it's your calling. So if you find yourself in your studio working, but if you think, oh, I can't go there today, and it is that, so to be honest to yourself, that's important. Because if, you, is it, if the process is your passion, you find time to it. And then I had a happy thing. Hap I wasn't really, I was thinking that should I stop the whole Udumbara or not. But then my colleagues in Ara Arabia, uh, well, Arabia Art, to me, they had said to Arabia Itala Center that, that they should have me teaching because they had master classes for their customers. And then uh, they asked me to give the classes, pottery wheel classes for Arabia Itala's customers at the design center. And all the money I earned from there, I put it back to Udumbara. So I bought uh, the clay mixer machine and extra wheels to my studio. Because in Arabia, you have to use industrial clay. Y you can't find a fire wild clay with st stoneware clay. So. We, I couldn't teach there with this cl uh, that, <laughs> that clay, so uh, I thought there with industrial clay. And then uh, we got COVID, and I got laid off from the airport. Mm. And uh, actually, I had already told my uh, boss that I will apply to study, and my aim was to go and study design management, either in La uh, Alto or Lap uh, Lapland University. But then uh, when COVID started and I was watching YouTube at my, <laughs> my studio, I said, why would I, I'm turning soon 60, why would I go and study again? No, I don't want to do it. So actually I applied to study audiovisual communication and I studied that COVID time. And I've never been so good to the student that I, I was there because it was uh, COVID. So I could do the studying at home. So we had teams meetings, so I was at my studio and there's a lot of boring stuff, stuff happening in the school. Sorry, teachers. <laughs> 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 but I, ha I had always really hard time in school because I got bored. But here I was in my pottery, doing my pottery, and then the teacher said, Eva, what do you think? And then I cleaned my finger and I went and said, <laughs> yes, I think that's good. <laughs> but I... It, not everybody studies the same way. It was perfect for me that I didn't have to be at the pl place. So, and also I decided even more simplify my uh, my pottery making. So I stopped using glazes. So since that I've been only using kultela clay. So um, I I thought it's really important that I know if I create something, I know where the material comes from. Exactly. So I have Anupura, you can see in my YouTube channel. I have a uh, video called uh, Conscious Ceramics. And then you can see who digs the clay and makes the clay for me. Yes, so that was, that was my, uh, 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 yes, the so COVID was like, uh, uh, it was really good thing for me because then I came back to the pottery and Two years ago, I was in Venice looking for the uh, uh, Biennale there, and I called my boss at the airport, and I said, hey, I'm not going to come back. And she <laughs> said, I already guessed that. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> I'm dyslexic, so <laughs> I was supposed, this is so, everything is going right way, so what do we leave behind? <laughs> So I think this is one of the important guidance to me because we live in the world that's producing too much. And, and I think we are all thought to be, we're supposed to produce a lot. That's how you're a good girl when you produce a lot. <laughs> and, uh, but now there's never been so many people in this earth that there is right now. So we can't be like that anymore. I had so yesterday somebody giving a lecture at my studio. Uh, we're going to have it again about raw clay. And uh, 
not everything needs to be fired. And my, uh, my dream is to go more and more in the making of raw clay, because if you make something that's not fired, it can be in the museum, but the museums don't take stuff anymore because they have too much <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but if it's, uh, if it's a genius work, they can preserve it for several hundred years. But if it happened to not to be so perfect and it goes to, to uh, maybe somebody throws it in the forest, it will go back to earth. I think that's fantastic. So, so that's a thought I want to leave to everybody. <laughs> and, uh, and everyone, uh, I think what w this world re needs now is craftsmanship and people should have time to learn. And the good way to have time to learn is that maybe you work a couple of days a week in something else because then you're not, it, it drains you out if you have a lot of economical problems. And, and, uh, and uh, Crowning, which was really happy that he started with the meditation because I think you can, only way you find your inner voice is within yourself. And also in craftsmanship, I think if you learn the craft, you have time to, to start doing unique things. So a lot of, when you just want to immediately do something, then you make something that everybody else is doing. But if you give yourself time to go deep into one thing and learn it, and give yourself time to learn. I would like to give pottery wheel classes without making products, but we live in the capitalistic society, <laughs> so I wouldn't have any customers then. But if, it, if I would teach professional group pottery, I wouldn't make a product for two weeks in the beginning. Just practice, 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 because you can always use the clay again. Yeah, and go deep. So I, my advice to anybody who's young and doing something, use materials you know the origin from. It can come everywhere from the world, but if you know the origin, they are usually ethically sourced because there's a big, big problem that if you buy uh, colors or any materials that you don't know where they come from, they are not ethically sourced. And uh, because y people usually don't treat people bad face to face, but if they don't know where it comes, then they don't care. And uh, we need to care, I think. For yeah, that's I really like the idea that there is uh, everybody is creative, uh, but s people say uh, ceramics is such a, a grounding material, and and I said it's grounding and it and it's really good for therapy. But you need to have material that is sourced the way that other people don't get hurt, just because you need therapy. So if you get use kultelakele or something that you know the origin from, then then I think we get more deeply happy, <laughs> more joy out of your life. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Eva. Let's give Eva a couple of minutes to break, and now you can share with your, the one you're sitting next to your first thoughts of Eva's uh, performance. <laughs> and, and then we come back with the questions, okay? So two minutes yeah. time to for a discussion. Okay, questions. Did you did you come up with questions for Eva? Do you want to know more? <laughs> no, everybody's <laughs> quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, what's the story behind the name Udumbara? Well, uh, I lived in uh, America when I was young, and I was kind of feeling a little bit outsider, so what happens when you're abroad, I joined a Buddhist sect, a Japanese Buddhist sect, and, uh, I <laughs> uh, and uh, they told me that I have chosen my parents and my country, so I came back <laughs> here. So, mm -hmm. But I was um, for 14 years very active in that. But now I think uh, everybody finds their answers with them within themselves, so I'm not... Uh, in any ism anymore. There's so many w different ways to the same mountains. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, Firstly, I want to say uh, I very much 
enjoy your uh, presentation, and I really find that your funny and humor way of presenting your life is truly encouraging. Uh, and I have a question you mentioned you have sort of this infused uh, Japanese and Chinese style uh, with the Finnish clay and Finnish design. So could you please uh, elaborate more about how your journey and sort on this? Well, I, when I, I, all the Japanese has always interest me. Even I think that the way I make pottery has more tradition in Japanese culture than, uh, like I've never known the Finnish potter when I studied and and actually the modern studio pottery comes from Japan to UK and from UK here. And uh, when I graduated, I went to Minna Evasia Oya had the tea school. She had just come from uh, back home from Japan and she had tea school and we did uh, tea art at her home. That's how I first got to know. And when I studied, we did Raku at school and I, I thought it was the Japanese Raku. <laughs> and then I realized that it has nothing to do with the Japanese Raku. It's just the American uh, Western style thing. So uh, th that, that's how I got into tea. And then I, uh, when I worked in uh, China, I worked in Yiching, which is famous for the teapots and Chinese tea culture that's uh, very much alive maybe now it's alive in mainland China, but before it was uh, living in uh, Taiwan a lot because a lot of people uh, moved to Taiwan. And in Mao Zedong's time, I think the tea houses were not that popular <laughs> in a in the way. And that uh, in I I did tea meditation, which is uh, you you ser there's somebody serving tea with the friends and you sit together in silence. I very much like that. Thank you. Yeah. So that, uh, you said that this uh, material is reusable. Is it so also so that the ready-made culture you can make something out of that again? Well, I'm lucky because I know where my material comes from. So when I have, if I can send the pots that I don't use back to Kultela and Anu will mill them and add them to my sculpture clay. But a lot of times uh, people just throw them away and, and uh, when you throw it away, it's away from your mind, but from the nature it's not gone for next 2000 years. Or last summer I was in uh, Lithuania uh, in a symposium of ritual vessels and I had to study about Finnish ritual vessels. And actually, I'm very proud of our culture because in Finland, all the ritual vessels were wood. So we lived so close to nature, so we didn't leave there anything. But they have found in Finland these uh, clay idols that are over 7,000 years old. And they, uh, they think they come from Baltic countries. But uh, I think we should go back to what our an ancestors did because they sourced the material close. They were even glassmakers in Finland. And, you know, there is all this material around us. So we should start using that now. Or then if we use foreign materials, we should know where it comes from. Um, I would like to ask, uh, uh, since you mentioned uh, uh, you came from a Buddhist uh, background, uh, so back to the scene of our talk in Europe, so I found uh, Buddhist philosophy, uh, I was in endurance, and the process of uh, ceramic craftsmanship. They somehow have some connection. But I want to hear uh, from your point of view, uh, and we heard your amazing and very inspiring life experience. Um, your professional education background and your dharma practice, is this somehow uh, influence your life choices? I, I think it has because uh, I've been simplifying so much. So I think 
uh, how I'm feeling, I'm finding my balance, I always find a simple way to do things. And I think that's through the meditation practice that makes it. Because we live in a world that you can get so many, so many people are doing this and that and that and this and that. Oh, there's this and, and then there's that. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, then they end up not doing anything deeply. So I think it is, f for I, like the flower pot, I said that I, that's, in, in that's something for me when it always comes a little bit better. I've done it since 2005, I started making them, and, and I think that's, there's some deepness in that, so, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Henna Makela. I come from Lufta Sportswear Company. There is actually a big group of us here today. <laughs> and thank you for the presentation. We actually work at the airport at the same time. So ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is uh, regarding grounding, endurance. Um, I wanted to talk more about also mindfulness and pottery. Do you somehow combine them in your courses or yes. are you planning to do so? Or I give mindful pottery classes yeah. and I even even in my regular classes I talk a lot about finding your Hara center because doing pottery comes from here, not here. <laughs> and, uh, and in our society very much we are up here, but we have, uh, this is where we bathe the pills and, <laughs> and take care, go, the bus is going that time and that. And then we have other brain, which is our heart, which is the feeling. That's like when I touch it, the, this clay for the first time, I just knew this is the way. And, and this, <laughs> this, my wisdom comes from my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. And I, my life always here has told me what to do, but my brain has said, no, that's not fun. <laughs> I rather, I rather do this. Oh, <laughs> so I think uh, I, I n now I just know that I should have heard here. And I always, I, I, when I started my meditation practice, actually when I did the Buddhist, I did chanting, and that's very dynamic and you get things done and when you're young you have so much going on in your head you need to chant just to cool down and then when I was a little bit older I started meditating to my heart <laughs> now I'm so old that I'm already in my stomach <laughs> but but I think I should have it would have been important to learn this much earlier and it's it, it's it's I think I was I felt really homeless for many many years and and then Actually, I was in, this sounds very fancy, I was in Assisi in Italy and I realized my home has been with me all along and it's here within me and it was, and, and it's been there since that. So I, I feel safe, which I didn't feel. But I, I, I have, I give regular classes where I talk about this Hara Center, but then I give weekend classes where we do silent meditation. I'm, my aim is not to be a, a meditation guru. <laughs> I teach craftsmanship, but I think the craftsmanship is here for the reason for people to learn to ground. Because when you try pottery wheel for a first time, it's very hard. And uh, one, it, but that's how as hard is is to find your ground also. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Thank you. Did it answer? Very well, thank you. <laughs> and at the airport, I loved, I did people watching always. Mm -hmm. I, and I said, so many beautiful people, all kinds of beautiful people. I thought it was fantastic there. Any more questions? Anyone? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.